Ed here with the Digital Digest, and today I'm unboxing the Lenovo ThinkBook Plus Gen 5 Hybrid. This retails for roughly $3,500 US dollars. I'll include a link in the description. And in full disclosure, this was furnished to me by Lenovo for review purposes, but will be going back to them once my coverage has been completed. So what you're about to see debuted back at CES 2024, and I think it was arguably one of the most compelling devices to debut, and that's because what you're about to see in this gigantic box is essentially an Ultrabook that allows its 14-inch display to detach, much like Microsoft Surface Book, and then deliver a tablet experience running Android uh, 13 uh, with all the bells and whistles of a premium Android tablet. And then, of course, whenever you want to dock it back, you're back to having a traditional uh, laptop with uh, an Intel Core Ultra 7 processor, 32 gigs of RAM, a 75 watt hour battery. So basically all the niceties that you'd expect uh, from a top of the line Ultrabook. So what Lenovo did here is really uh, quite special when you put it into perspective, especially comparing it to much of the competition. And again, this is a review unit. It has clearly already uh, been opened up by the PR team or someone else who got it for review. But as you can see, as soon as I open this now, we are greeted with multiple boxes. And hopefully my audio uh, is still capturing everything. Now this is empty, so this was literally just a spacer. Let's go ahead and pull each of these out. I'll actually keep that out, try to make my life a little bit easier because this is not so easy for me. For anyone that watches the channel, you already know I'm still recovering from major surgery, and even though these things don't weigh a lot, positioning is what it's all about. So, getting both of these out of here, and going to get this box out of the way, bring this guy back in, and basically, again, what you're about to see comprises of two standalone machines that come together to give you one in that situation where you need it. So let's start off with this guy. I'm not sure what we're gonna have in each box, but we're gonna find out. And this is where we'll begin. And the really cool part about this, I mentioned the specs on the Ultrabook, uh, or excuse me, yes, on the Ultrabook, but with the tablet, what you're getting is also really impressive because it has 12 gigs of RAM on its own, DDR5. It also has a Qualcomm Snapdragon uh, 8 Plus Gen 1, so it has a legit chip. It also has 256 gigs of internal storage, and the beautiful part of this is that uh, Lenovo is using one of their 14-inch uh, 3K OLED displays, so you're really not sacrificing on anything here. I would say the biggest rub, potentially, is just the actual weight of the device once you know everything is attached because that's going to be roughly around four pounds to my understanding um, so i think it's like uh, around two pounds for the base of the machine and then another pound and three quarters for the display so this is just the base and what's really cool about this is that you can actually use this independently from the screen portion. So let's say you want to have the Android tablet active, but still want to use your PC, you can just have a portable display or hook this up to an actual monitor and be good to go, which is so cool. I mean, really, this is the Surface Book concept finally being brought into true mature form that is actually usable. Now, to my knowledge, this guy is powered by a 100 watt uh, charging brick, which I assume is right here. And then the tablet portion can be charged with that or with a 65 watt. It looks like we've got, appears like we have two chargers in here. So let me see if I can get them out. Nope, just one. So they just fooled me with the wiring. But there you have it. This is just one of Lenovo's 100 watt uh, chargers. And now let's go ahead and take a look at the, the paperwork here, at least upon first glance and they're giving you the guide for how to attach uh, the tablet portion, the display. So essentially, uh, the hybrid tab, as Lenovo is referring to it, you cannot remove that um, from any position. It's specifically at a 90 degree that it's going to detach. You see, attach at a 90, detach at a 90. It says plus five degrees, 
plus or minus, I guess. But if you try to do this, you know, fully opened, it's not going to work out, basically, removal or uh, insertion of the display. And it says when you attach the tab, hold the tab vertically uh, to ensure that both guide bolts on the station are properly inserted into the guide slots. Before you detach the tab, adjust the screen, opening the angle to 90 degrees, plus or minus 5 degrees, then hold the station and pull up the tab to detach it. And it says if the screen opening angle is too large or too small, the tab station will be locked and therefore unable to be detached. So that's it. Let's go ahead and get this off of it. And to my knowledge, this is actually replacing the uh, spin model, the ThinkBook Plus Gen 4, which had the spinning or rotating display, which was a very cool machine. I did uh, unbox that here on the channel a while back. Very cool conceptually, not available anymore. Um, you can see Intel Core Ultra 7, the ARC graphics. And remember, just as an Ultrabook, which is everything in here, literally, it's all inside here, 32 gigs of RAM, uh, one terabyte NVMe, the Intel Ultra 7 uh, CPU. So this is no slouch. Um, and then this thing also has pen support. So going around the side of the machine, um, you can see that we have uh, essentially uh, what I presume is a wireless antenna. It's Wi-Fi 6E on this guy. Uh, then we have our power button right there. I believe this is just ventilation. And then a Thunderbolt port. That is a Thunderbolt 4 port right there on the right side. Coming around the back, uh, I believe those are speakers, but it could just be more ventilation. A lot of ventilation on the bottom. Speakers over here for sure. Coming around to what is the left side of the machine, we have another uh, Thunderbolt port right there. If it comes into focus, hopefully it does. More ventilation. Uh, our headphone microphone combo jack, and that is it. So from a port, another antenna there. So from a port selection, pretty slim pickings, but the concept is straightforward. Thunderbolt 4 should be able to do everything we need. Uh, trackpad is not haptic, to my knowledge. You can see it's actually depressing. And, you know, the keyboard, as usual with Lenovo, feels good, at least as far as I can detect. And then they are showing you there, there is a button there, uh, to switch between Windows and Android. So really, this is all about being a jack of all trades, and let's just hope it actually accomplishes that task. So again, uh, very cool, no question about that. Let's go ahead and bring out the display, which is also the Android tablet. And really, I mean, it is so unique to have two machines in one. And that's why it's expensive. That's why it's weighty. Um, build quality does seem excellent. It is that, you know, CNC machined aluminum, which I've al always really liked that industrial look. And, you know, Lenovo has not been shy about delivering it. So here is the separator for the machine itself, aka the Android tablet. That's also going to act as our display. And then I believe they've also included um, their easel for this. So let's just see. I believe that's what's in here. And that is everything from this box. So let's go ahead and put that down. Hopefully I did get the, the easel as I clobber my microphone. It's not quite a clobbering, but, and we'll get to this in a second. It looks like the easel is not in here, but I can't imagine that Lenovo did not send the easel. That would not make a lot of sense. And there it is. So for anyone wondering why there is an easel, it's so that you can actually place your tablet on something as like a portable uh, display, if you will. So there is part of the easel, some instructions. It looks like that third leg is just going to pop out, so we'll get there in a second. And let's take a look at the tablet itself now. So let me get that centered. The easel, this just, from what I just saw in the instructions, just kicks out. There you go. Very cool tablet stand, I have to say. Um, for something that's, you know, again, industrial design, all metal, and it's just going to do the job. I like it. It's a cool stand. And now to the best part, which is our OLED 14-inch 3K panel that's also touchscreen. I didn't see the pen, so I'm going to be on the lookout for that. There it is. As I say it, ask, and there it is. Um, so we have a pen, as you can see, and of course I will be testing that out as well get this out of the way. And I think when Lenovo first showed this off, they were, you know, 
putting the price somewhere around two grand, but that's really not important at this point. So a little bit of paperwork again, explaining the exact same thing we just went through. I'm gonna get that out of the way and let's look at this thing. So we're gonna start off with the bottom. Uh, you can see we have a type C port right there, the proprietary port, what appears to be a dedicated power button, some more proprietary ports for docking on the actual machine itself. We have an array of cameras. I believe it's a 13 and a five megapixel. It does say 13 megapixel dual. Um, and then we have, I think a 10 megapixel front facing camera right there. I believe, not positive. Very modern looking uh, piece of hardware. A Little bit of dust and stuff on it out of the box, but really slick looking. Uh, reminds me of the Yoga lineup of tablets, uh, speakers on the right side, and really nothing along, the, well, there are things, I shouldn't say that. Privacy switch, microphone array, volume rockers, presumably, more speakers on the other side. Hopefully that's actually in focus. And that's pretty much it. So that USB-C port is your only port. This does not move when it's detached. Um, I could try to power this on on its own. Let's see if that, I mean, it's definitely possible. I'm gonna go ahead and try these buttons and just see if I get lucky. I mean, the smartest thing though would be to dock this baby. Uh, and before I do that, here is that easel so that you can just, you know, drop it on and you now have a tablet stand, which is really cool because remember you can use this, these do communicate wirelessly. So in the event you wanted to actually work and, you know, elevate the display, I'm pretty sure you can do that as well. So let's go ahead and dock it and I'm gonna move the easel out of the way get the pen out of the way. Let's dock this thing and see how it responds. So again, um, there is a magnetic pull on that. So they are trying to make your life a little bit easier. Now, it doesn't seem like I'm lining it up very well though. I'm gonna have to stand up for this. I don't think I can do this seated, unfortunately. And I've gotta make sure that it is lined up as it should be. So it's like once you get that in, I'm holding down, uh, you know, the machine, and I'm sure this is mostly on me right now, or completely on me, because they did make it pretty clear that you've got to line this up um, in the 90 degree angle, which I'm doing, but it does look like when this was detached, as if, um, well, I'm trying to figure it out. I may have to bring it over to myself to see it better, because for me to reach right now is very, very difficult. So I'm looking at this just to see how I'm not lining this up correctly but what i'm seeing is that whoever last used this before it was sent out it was done at an angle unless that is so i just got it but um as you can see it's a it's angled back a little bit so i feel like whoever yeah whoever took it off last that's that's why it was angled that way so now i'm not sure that we're really locked in it seems like yep now we are so not, not a major learning curve there. Let me go back to where that power button was, right here on the right side. And let's see if this powers on. If not, it looks like we have juice, so let's just see. There we go, it is booting. And it's a really nice machine. That's one thing I have not said. Um, the machined aluminum all around, even if this ends up being a little bit weighty at around four pounds, you have to remember this is two devices in one. So it's, in my opinion, an acceptable uh, weight gain if there ever was one because you're not going to take around a tablet anymore. And that's because this does have specs like a premium Android tablet, 14-inch um, OLED, so one of the larger uh, tablets you're going to find on the market, so really nice. And then in addition to that, you just have uh, an excellent display from what I can see. Now the pen, I have not opened up. Let's go ahead and do that right now. Um, and I'm also gonna hit this just for testing purposes because that is supposed to switch us. It is supposed to switch us. Anybody listening? And it has the co-pilot button. I'm not sure that that you know, functions um, in the manner as intended. I'm using shift now to see if that does anything, but uh, it is not. There we go. So they're talking about smart key. We don't need to send an on anonymous statistics to anybody here. Go ahead and continue to open this. So it's smart key was just a bind for uh, quick access to Lenovo Vantage, their monitoring and their performance uh, settings. 
I'm getting the pen opened if I can. Harder than you might think. Um, this was really sealed shut. I am destroying the packaging, unfortunately, but I don't think whoever looked at this first actually touched the pen. So um, let's go ahead and pull that. It looks like it does need to be charged. You can see there's a USB-C port there. So I'm not expecting uh, any form of functionality here. Yep, it does need to be charged. So I'll get that charged up. Nowhere to actually put it, which, you know, is what it is. I don't think that's such a terrible thing. It is not magnetic. After all, this actually doesn't feel like it's metal. So there's nowhere this is going to attach or anything, but still good to have it uh, and not need it rather than need it and not have the option. So again, I'm going to try hitting this button to switch, but I am not seeing that happen. So for whatever reason, we will eventually uh, figure this out. I'm not, I'm not seeing where I've got to go to make that happen. And again, if I go function, that did it. So there we go. Now we're in the Android mode. And I know this is not the best angle, but um, you can see it's happening. Now to release uh, from it, that I am not sure. I know I'm sure it was all over these instructions. So let me see. It says to detach Again, um, you just hold this down and pull up, but I'm trying to see where it actually tells you. I mean, again, it's gotta be at 90 degrees. All right, it's saying you just pull it. See, I figured there would be a physical locking mechanism, but apparently there is not. So let's just try this again. Okay, it feels like it is locked in. So despite saying that there's no lock, I, I knew there would have to be a lock. So. I'm looking to see what the actual lock is. Hold on, I'm gonna pull it off screen again to see where we gotta go here. Um, I believe it's the F11, which is an actual lock icon. So let me just test that out. Uh, maybe not, still working on it. It's coming up with a user guide now, which I was not looking for. Give me a second here. Because there we go. So that is the way you do it. The lock button does work. So now you can see I've got my Android tablet in hand and basically it just wants to walk us through uh, setting up the tablet. So I'm gonna do this. Um, again, this was just an unboxing. We're gonna get down to business. Uh, we're gonna test this thing out, but it's just really, really cool. Now the USB port on here, I do wanna end by pointing out and there's the power button that I totally missed earlier. Um, but the USB-C uh, port on here is not a Thunderbolt port. It is just a, what they're calling, I think a multi-port. Um, so charging, all that good stuff. Uh, I believe this tablet, I didn't mention this before as I just damaged my desk. Uh, that's how well made this is folks. Has a 38 watt hour battery and then the dock I believe has a 75 watt hour battery. So Lenovo is actually quoting this at 12, I think, hours of overall use as a PC. That'll be very interesting to see uh, if it actually pans out. Um, again, this machine can do a little bit of everything. So if it really lives up to the hype, I think this is an incredible first step in a direction that's gonna give people the ability to, again, replace two devices with one. And hopefully it does so well. I mean, based on the specs, again, this is a real Android tablet with an excellent display a, a good processor, not the latest and greatest, but a Snapdragon 8 Plus Gen 1 is no slouch. Um, again, uh, 12 gigs of RAM, uh, 256 gigs of internal storage, three cameras. It's got a little bit of everything. And then you do have a legit Ultrabook in this dock that, as I mentioned, can be used totally independently of the tablet. So uh, they've pretty much thought of everything. Build quality looks great, and I'm excited to just start using it, test it out and report back to all of you as to whether or not this is gonna be your next two-in-one that, again, is the only product of this kind on the market here in 2024, to my knowledge, especially from a large manufacturer who makes some of the best hardware in the business. But that's it. Again, ThinkBook Plus Gen 5 Hybrid. Really like that Lenovo is continuing to push the envelope and something that historically maybe would have been vaporware is now a reality and available for purchase. And I can assure you that $3,500 price point is only going to go down. And I really am awaiting the day that Lenovo updates this product with a GPU on board. I mean, the sky is the limit with making this 
uh, really just an incredible product that changes our workflow and the number of devices we travel with. And remember, it has a 100 watt charger for the entire package. This guy though, uh, the tablet, just needs a 65 watt charger. So we'll see what battery life and performance is all about. Uh, Wi-Fi 6E on both, Bluetooth 5.3 on both, if I didn't mention it before. Um, and don't forget 32 gigs of RAM, I think it's the third or fourth time I've mentioned it, on the actual machine. So multitasking isn't gonna be uh, a problem at all. We'll see how everything runs. Any questions or comments, please feel free to post them at that like button. And as usual, please feel free to subscribe and please stay safe. Later.